A local woman takes on Walmart in court and wins. What was worse, she continued to receive demand letters from a Walmart-affiliated law firm offering to drop the matter if she paid them $200, meaning the company used the criminal charges to bolster their chances of civil recovery. Attention all shoppers, associates, and management. Attention Walmart shoppers and associates. My name is Beth from Electronics. I would like to say to all of you today that nobody should work here. Ever. I've been working at Walmart for almost five years, and I can say that everyone here is overworked and underpaid. Our managers will make promises and never keep them, and not only that, they will preach to us about how they care about their employees, but about a month ago, my boss, Assistant Manager Cora, called me a waste of time and management did nothing to help. The attendant policy is bullshit. We are treated for management and customers poorly every day. Whenever we have a problem with it, we're told that we're replaceable. History. Walmart Inc. is an American retail, super center, superstore, and grocery themed stores. It also owns and operates Sam's Clubs across the United States and retail warehouses. As of October 31st, 2022, Walmart has over 10,000 plus stores and clubs in 24 countries operating under 46 different names across the world. The company operates under the name Walmart in the United States and Canada and other names in other countries. Walmart is the world's largest company by revenue with about $570 billion in annual revenue each year according to the Fortune Global 500 list in May 2022. It is also the largest private employer in the United States and in the world with 2.2 million employees they employ. It is a publicly traded family-owned business as the company is controlled by the evil capitalist pigs, the Walton family. Yeah. Walmart employee, she's been looking at us, but she won't come over. Look at all those Oscars in there. I can't get all over that. I have never seen this in all my years. God, the Oscars have terrible color too. Same with this in there that they have out for that's not even been used for. Really. Stabilize the pH and bring down the ammonia. Yeah, you could definitely smell the ammonia. Yes, look at this, you guys. Yeah, everybody knows koi. Everybody's seen a koi pond. You guys know how big they are. I mean, these koi, gosh, they're a good three, three and a half inches long. And they're all shoved in maybe a five gallon aquarium. Maybe. Oh no. Poor little guy. Animal abuse and Walmart animal cruelty. Walmart puts profits over the well beings of animals they sell, aka, you know, typical capitalism. Walmart has been accused for several years on and off of pet fish abuse, cruelty, aka animal abuse for fish. I myself have been a victim of this. I bought multiple fish from their store. They were all sick and bad quality. They just sell sick fish to customers and they have been accused of not feeding or cleaning the tanks for the fish tanks. They also sell abusive fish bowls which are too small just to make capitalism profits. Just to make a, again, capitalism, you know, quick capitalism buck. Another woman, Shanera Persad, saw a photo of a small beta fish languishing in a cup full of dirty water at Walmart store. She knew she couldn't stay silent. That's another person who spoke up about this. I was scammed at Walmart because they knowingly sold me a starving, bad quality sick fish and a fish bowl that is abusive just so the fish, you know, can live in a tiny bowl that's too small for them just so they can make capitalism profits. Walmart has apparently gotten rid of the fish industry and I heard they're getting out of the fish industry, I don't know for sure, and doesn't sell them anymore. Allegedly, the mass retailer reportedly announced that it would be pulling all pet fish 
and live aquatic plants from its own stores. However, the company is letting individual store managers decide whether or not to discontinue this section and practice of their pet department sooner. It appears that many of the estimated seventeen hundred dollar I mean seventeen hundred Walmart stores that carry pet fish have already removed their display tanks. This will undoubtedly come as good news as many animal welfare advocates, including PETA and aquarium hobbyists who often accuse Walmart of failing to provide proper care to the animals, aka animal abuse for fish, in their stores or provide customers with su su sinif sufficient information, pet information, to care for the new pets. And told co-workers that a fellow employee had been bothering her. Montgomery would come in on his days off and hang around the shoe department and follow Gail around. So they questioned once again the manager of the gun department at Montgomery store. And this time, the manager admitted Montgomery bought a 22 caliber rifle shortly before Gail Islip's murder. When the manager learned Gail Islip was killed with a 22 caliber weapon, he panicked and changed the store's logbook. What it would have done for Montgomery was it would have given him a gun that was untraceable because there would have been no record of that gun having been sold in that store. True crime cases involving the topic of the company and Walmart. Negligence, negligence by managers. At the Manchester Walmart store helped a former employee buy a rifle at Walmart he allegedly used to murder his own co-worker, Gail. The lawsuit also alleges that Walmart management knew Montgomery was stalking and harassing Gail, including at the store, but did nothing to stop him. Gail's family has said that the days before her death, she had repeatedly requested a transfer to another department to get away from the man that was stalking her, aka Montgomery. The woman's husband contends in the lawsuit he filed. Police say Tyrone Montgomery f bought a rifle at Walmart at the store less than two weeks before ambushing the 54-year-old grandmother as she pulled into her driveway on April 30, 1996. A former Walmart sport goods manager has been charged with helping Montgomery 26 acquire the gun illegally and with destroying evidence of the transaction by trying to cover it up and lying to the police. An investigator has he hired also turned up evidence that Walmart supervision recorded keeping and training of employees and gun sales was severely lacking in the area. This true crime case was featured in Frank's Files documentary if anyone wants to check it out. Walmart pharmacies fueled an opioid epidemic. William County father targeted by Walmart security suspected of possibly kidnapping his three little girls all because they aren't the same race. At the center of this case, shoplifting accusations that led to a $2.1 million verdict. Leslie Nurse says she was at the self-checkout at the Sims Walmart with her husband and three kids, fighting a malfunctioning scanner, even getting help from a Walmart associate. After she thought she'd finished and paid, she was stopped by an asset protection manager. She was eventually charged with stealing $48 worth of groceries, 11 items in all, including Christmas lights, a loaf of bread, and cap and Crunch cereal. She was eventually arrested, mugshot taken, but the criminal charge was eventually dropped when no one from Walmart showed up to court. By then, she said, the damage to her reputation had already been done, her ability to make a living stifled by the criminal charge. At first you think, oh, well, I'll pay it and it'll all go away. But then I'm like, you know, I, I didn't do anything wrong. Why would I pay for something that I didn't do? But it turns out many people do. During testimony in the lawsuit she filed against the company, an expert testified Walmart routinely uses what are known as civil recovery laws in many states to get people they've accused of shoplifting to pay up. Testified that in a two-year period, Walmart charged some 1.4 million people across the country with criminal theft of property and ended up collecting more than $300 million through their civil demand letters in the same period. The lawsuit nurse filed against Walmart charged the company with abuse of process. Exactly, that they prosecute her solely for the purpose of getting what they call civil recovery on money. To add insult to injury, Walmart never produced a video that would have been recorded at the self-checkout area that would have proved nurse shoplifted or didn't. It would have shown the truth and that they didn't want the truth to be shown. At the end of this lawsuit, filed in 2018 and delayed by the COVID pandemic, a unanimous jury found for Nurse and awarded her $2.1 million in punitive damages. I hope it makes a difference. I don't want anybody else to have to go through this again. 
Here are just some of the customer lawsuits from Walmart. An Alabama woman who says she was falsely arrested for shoplifting at Walmart and then threatened by the Walmart company after her case was dismissed has been awarded $2.1 million in damages. She was stopped in November 2016 when trying to leave a Walmart with groceries. She said she already paid for According to AL.com, she said that she used a self-checkout, but the scanning device froze. She got help from the workers that worked in that section, and when she was leaving, workers didn't accept her explanation, and she was arrested for shoplifting, despite actually getting help from the people there. Her case was dismissed a year later after the law employee failed to show up in court. After a subpoena, she received the first of several letters from a Florida law firm threatening a civil suit unless she paid $200 as a settlement, the complaint states a uh, man is awarded a $4.4 million settlement after being racially profiled in Walmart. That guy was black. And on to the biggest thing how Walmart treats its workers and anti union buster activity. Management will also try and save money every step of the way, including cutting benefits of a part time or a full time associate down to part down to part time, even though he worked 40 plus hours a week. I'm tired of the constant gaslighting. This company treats their elderly associates like shit. To Jared, our store manager, you're a pervert. Greta and Kathy, shame on y'all for treating your associates the way you do. I hope you don't speak to your families the way you speak to us. I've been a loyal employee here for over a year and a half, and I'm sick of all the bogus write-ups and my job. Walmart doesn't deserve y'all. Management, this job, Walmart. Fuck manage it and fuck this job. I quit. Walmart is actually trying to defend a Thanksgiving food drive that an Ohio store set up for its own employees. Walmart shouldn't have a food drive for their employees. They make more than enough money to distribute the wealth to its workers. It's gross how Walmart thinks that this is okay. Signs attached to the storage containers lined up in an employee-only area ask workers to donate food items there so associates in need can enjoy Thanksgiving dinner. The CEO and the family themselves could should be forced to give up their wealth like why should other workers have to help them when you know they're hoarding all the wealth it makes no sense as usual capitalism companies put profits over the lives of everything the lives of their employees workers animals people and mother earth herself etc in the year 2021 walmart reportedly made a profit of more than 13.5 billion dollars during the pandemic in the COVID-19 times, Alice, Jim, and Bob, Rob Walson saw their net worth climb by over $10 billion each. Um, in 2021, the company announced it would raise minimum wage at Sam's Club to $15, but workers at Walmart were only bumped up to $12. Mindy, who works at Walmart 46, has worked as a cashier for Walmart in Malvern, Arkansas for over 11 years. She was quoted in saying, you can't pay your bills, rent, and buy groceries on only $12 an hour. I don't think anywhere in the United States you can do that. No way. Said Hughes, who's a member, I don't understand how they think $12 is enough to live on it at all. It's not. She is a diabetic with four children, continued working throughout the pandemic. She said working conditions have worsened due to the lack of COVID-19 precautions. The customers took their frustrations out on staff around missing products understaffing COVID protocols. If you want to see the effect that caring culture has on the mental health of employees and the physical health employees, check out my fast food deep dive video for more on the topic of Karens and public harassing employees in public. In the first nine months of the pandemic, Walmart provided only a fraction of their COVID profits to workers in the form of hazard pay and additional compensation. The Walton's net work increased 26 times more than the cost of COVID conversation for Walmart workers estimated at 71 cents an hour in additional wages for workers compared with a $6.2 million an hour wealth increase for the Waltons. Peter Naughton, a cashier and self-checkout host at Walmart, he said many of his co-workers have additional jobs on the side because Walmart CEOs are riding off the backs of the workers and the fruits of their labor like toll parasites, rental subsidies, and other governmental relief programs in order to make ends meet. In April 2021, he had to actually vacate his own apartment 
because and move in with his parents because he couldn't afford the rent anymore and other bills on top of that on a salary at Walmart because the owners who own Walmart are treating them and others that work at Walmart like wage slaves so the family can buy expensive luxury homes and mansions and fund their luxury lifestyle all while their employees live on the street and are basically homeless. Walmart Hare Ben pays $22 million for Cherry Hills Village properties. Rob has a house in Paradise Valley, Arizona, near the base of Camelback Mountain in the past. Protesters have rallied outside of his Arizona home to advocate for better wages and working conditions and treatment for workers as a whole, as they should. Rob also has a large collection of vintage cars. In 2013, he ran his Daytona Coupe, which is worth $15 million at the time, off the tracks and wrecked it. The car was only one of five ever made. A pregnant woman who worked at Walmart alleged that they have been unlawfully punished and fired for health hazard related abstinence and faced the threat of losing their jobs for seeking out proper medical care and have filed a lawsuit. Maintains a no fault, that's the thing that Walmart does, they maintain a no fault abstinence control policy towards its 2.3 million workers. The policy punishes all absences equally with a three strikes you're out policy point system which leaves ample room for unfair discrimination against absences who must call off work due to uncontrollable health circumstances. Capitalism has bad, you know, impacts on mental health. If you'd like to check that playlist out, I'm going to put it on the screen and maybe in the down description down below. That includes pregnant women who have medical needs. Employers are required to accommodate under existing anti-discrimination laws. Walmart, however, appears to operate in ignorance of these policies. Hoover, a victim of capitalism, from Walmart discovered she was pregnant while working as a Walmart jewelry associate in Alban, New York. After vomiting for three days straight, she became dehydrated and requested to call off work to go to the hospital, fearing for the future of her pregnancy, her baby, the fetus itself, and her health. Her manager responded with a warning that she that the absence would count against her with the three strikes you're out rule. With no other option, she admitted herself and spent four hours inside receiving flu fluid intravenously because she could not hold down any medication. When she arrived for her next shift, her manager fired her, declaring that her absence was inexcusable and claimed that Walmart does not accept doctor's notes. I was devastated when Walmart fired me, she said. I had a baby coming and all of a sudden now I can't pay my bills. I am bringing this lawsuit because what happened to me was wrong and I want to make sure that Walmart is held accountable so that other pregnant women and women as a whole won't be treated like I was. Another victim of capitalism, Kaylop, became dizzy and feared it was due to a miscarriage while at work when she informed two managers that she needed to leave to go to the hospital. She was seemingly warned that the call off would count as a strike. Months later, Kaylop awoke and began vomiting blood and she needed to miss her shift to go back to the hospital. When she was called in and explained her situation, she was informed that if she did not show up to work, she would lose her job and be fired. Walmart is going to pay $410,000 to settle a EEOC sexual harassment lawsuit as well. According to the EEOC's lawsuit from 2014 to 2018, a male employee of Walmart store in New York regularly made unwelcome sexual advances and comments to female co-workers and touched female workers without their consent, which is sexual assault. The EEOC alleged that Walmart management knew of this conduct for years and couldn't have received written complaints and did nothing about it. Walmart has been ordered to stop threatening workers who support strikes or participate in union organization activities. Walmart has settled a long-running battle and dispute with labor activists over the store's policy of punishing workers that support union organization activities. The agreement forces Walmart to acknowledge it has violated federal labor law in many of its California stores. Walmart has fought unions for years. It holds regular meetings with staff reviewing the benefits of a non-union store. It spends millions in legal actions each year in an effort to stop its 1.5 million workers from joining labor organizations or unionizing. In the California case, the NLRB concluded in 2016 that Walmart took illegal action against the employees. Walmart broke the law when it punished its workers for exercising their federally protected right to peacefully protest the agreement acknowledges that Walmart dress code restricting union apparel violated the U.S. Walmart stands out for its sheer magnitude and aggressiveness of its anti-union 
activity and actions. 57 class action lawsuits filed since 2000 complained that Walmart broke wage and hour laws by forcing workers to work off the clock, failing to pay them overtime and denying them meals and rest breaks in between. The largest class action employment discrimination lawsuit in U.S. history through videos and management presentations, Walmart often warns new workers and employees during their orientations about the negative impact and consequences of organizing and starting a union, providing a heavy spin on perpetuated drawbacks. The company provides similar warnings to managers at all levels and gives them explicit instructions on preventing union formalization, such as carefully monitoring monitor monitoring store moral, many of which are contained in the company's manage, manager's toolbox. Walmart hired defense contractor Lockheed Martin to gather intelligence on active workers as well.